Hello, good morning viewers. We welcome you to yet another day, a very important day in the church's calendar known as the All Souls Day. Yesterday was All Saints Day and today is All Souls Day. I welcome you to our devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, for this very day, also day, which uh, our topic for the day, the day's meditation is life through obedience. Before we continue, it will be good we pray at this time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are the one who created us for you. And our souls will find no rest until they rest in you. Help us, Lord, to care for our souls, to prepare for the eternity of our souls. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Once again, we welcome you. As we said, today is All Souls Day. So we are, our meditation, we are looking at primarily what is this day about? What message has it for us? All Souls Day has always been part two of All Saints Day. Just as last, yesterday we talked of All Saints Day, we discovered that uh, even though many churches mark All Saints Day, many churches recognize All Saints or Saints, but the meaning differs in many churches. So is also All Souls Day. The meaning ascribed to all sense or sense also reflects in the part two, which is All Souls. Before Reformation and today for the Roman Catholics and maybe some other churches, all sense are people who have died and uh, recognized through a process and uh, are known or believed to be in heaven. They have made heaven. Then all souls, now following that also means for them those who have equally died as well, but they have not made heaven. Their souls are somewhere else called Pogatre, and uh, um, this is a day for them to be prayed for, so that uh, it's a day to pray for the dead, for the souls of such people. So that is the All Souls Day for them. But from the Reformation, it became clear to many that you will not, don't need to pray for the dead. At least from the canonical scriptures we receive. When after here, as said in Hebrew, that when you are dead, it's appointed unto man to die once. And after that, that is um, judgment. That is what follows. So, but we believe that the souls don't die. So after living, at the end of the day, there will be resurrection. So eventually, even though some stop outrightly the celebration of All Souls Day, but for some, like an Anglican church, we continue because soul is very important. But the meaning is changed. It's no longer about uh, praying for the dead or remembering for the dead, but commemoration of the faithful departed. 
following the belief in the resurrection of the dead and the communion of the saints. That even those that died are still dear and we still cheer in the same church. That's why yesterday we talk of the saints militant, those that are still alive, still moving, and the saints triumphant, those that have gone. So today we remember mainly those people that are still, they have died. Remember your own people that have died and passed, and uh, it reminds us that one day we will all meet again at the feet of our master. One day, this our fellowship, we will join together. And when we leave, death is not the end of everything. Death is not the end. We concluded yesterday with that, that our sense will continue, the life continues. What we call death is transition. So today is a time we ask ourselves questions. My soul, Jesus wants us. This is your soul. How do you prepare for it? Do you, is it just about this earth? What if if you get the whole world and, and uh, forfeit your soul? What does it profit you? What is the value of your soul? Think of the soul that those have gone and you also think of your own soul. Your loved one that have gone, will you still meet them? Are you in the same faith? You yourself, do you know you will go? Do you know you will leave this earth? Do you know that everything you have, one day you will no longer have them? Everything will perish, but your soul will not perish. At the end, some will come up to everlasting damnation and some to the resurrection of life. I think at this point, well, let's read the scriptures and see what is written here. The passage for the day about our life to come and the soul. Let me quickly read it as we stand off. Um, John chapter 5 is the passage for the day. John chapter 5 from verse 24 to 29. John 5, 24 to 29. That is from the New King James Version. John 5, 24 to 29. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can see, I think it's very clear there that there will be resurrection, that every person will be judged. That when you die, at the end, you will still come up 
to the resurrection of life or resurrection of condemnation. It's either this or that. So it's for you to prepare yourself. And how do you do that? That is the topic, life through obedience. You follow God. You submit. That's what yesterday, because I say it's second part. Also, it's second part of the all sense. Yesterday, we talked about people submitting themselves to the rulership of God. They are the part of the kingdom of God. And they are the sense. They are part of this kingdom. We want to be part of this kingdom. Submit yourself. Follow God. We feel obedience. Obedience is not uh, what you do just for fear of punishment. No. It's something when you will fully, share fully, responding to the love of God. In verse 25 to 29, Jesus specifically identifies himself as the long-awaited Messiah, who is both the life giver and the life bringer. He uses the power of his word to bring new life to those who are spiritually dead with no consciousness of sin or sorrow for their rebellion against God. Do you find yourself in that situation? The good news is that Jesus Christ has the power to redeem you and give you new life if you respond to his invitation to make him Lord of your life. However, Jesus also wants that those who refuse his invitation now we face condemnation in the future and we face an eternity outside of Christ. Basically, what we do with Jesus here decides or determines how and where we will spend eternity. If you are reading this this, this morning or if you are listening or if you are watching that you are not sure of your eternal destination. Today is your opportunity to make things right with God by asking Jesus to come into your life. Do not delay. You know, can you do that now? The moment of silence, Jesus is calling you. He doesn't want you to perish. He has come that you will have life and have it abundantly. It won't take you much. He has done it for you. It's for you to just come and accept his finished work so that your soul will live forever in his presence, worshiping him. Will you ask him now to come into your life, to take control of your life? and it will be well with you. Let's pray. Let's say this prayer. My Father, I'm sorry that I have lived life, lived my life without thought of you and my eternal destination. Help me to come alive again through genuine repentance as I feed daily on your word. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for your children. We thank you for this day that you have made this special call to us. And as many as responded, Lord, we pray for your enabling grace. Uphold them. Sustain them. Keep them unto eternity. Bless us all, Lord, that in our life here, we will always be yours, even unto eternity. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for fellowshipping with us today. And uh, we also invite you to join us tomorrow uh, and always, every day, this same time, this same station, every day, this time, tune this station, ACNN, for the day's edition of the Daily Fountain. 
And uh, if you are led to sponsor us, that uh, this thing will continue. Please contact the numbers and the email that are now showing on your screen. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and YouTube at youtube.com slash ACNN TV. Check out our website at www.acnntv.com. May God preserve your soul. May the Lord be with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord.